Okay, we should be live now. Hello. Hi. Uh, this game is really loud in my headphones right now, but I think the audio balance is kind of okay. Please let me know if that's not the case before I begin. Today we're just gonna have a quick run through of Golden Axe and then potentially Golden Axe 2. I have prepared the options in advance. And I'm gonna get started very soon because this isn't exactly the best track I've ever heard. So yeah, let's let's just kinda get on with it. Blah 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 blah. Hello. Best sound effects. So yeah, we're just gonna kinda play through this, maybe get wrecked a little bit. Laugh at some death noises. I believe this was the second video game I ever played in my life, after Sonic 2. And we've already taken damage. GG. The audio is okay and everything, right? Enemies have great difficulty attacking you if you're not on the same plane as they are. Their magic is already full, because this guy has terrible magic. But the best weapon. Meh. Why not? There's plenty of magic around, I'll just cast it. Uh, I don't really know if I have anything interesting to talk about while playing this particular game, to be honest. Have you seen this game at all before? The answer to that question will greatly influence what I talk about. the vast majority of enemies into the pit. Or falling ourselves, if we're bad. We may have tried this at some point, yes. I don't remember that though, I only remember trying Streets of Rage. But we probably did. My memory's terrible. And much like Streets of Rage, this is a game that's much easier with one person, because you can predict the enemy movements. And get wrecked anyway. Also, Twitch is using the, uh, the dark theme text on the white background, because the themes are broken right now, so chat is kind of difficult to read, and I'm too lazy to fix it. So bear with me. turtle. Well, there's the first quarter of the game done. I don't actually know if, if you collect health when your health is already full, I don't know if it gives you back the health, which, you know, of, of the uh, of the current little blue bar, like the damage you've already taken, do you get that back or not? I have no idea. This guy has the best weapon and movement and the crappest magic 
I think he's best anyway. Because you don't use your magic all that often, usually. Generally just save it for bosses. You fall in the pit, you do lose an entire life. I'm not gonna bother trying to... ...to attack this guy. Considering my magic's already fallen, if I do, I'll just fall in. I'll just... there we go. Wait for him to go away. use it here because I have played this game before and therefore know that there is magic right after these guys. Nice. Attacks from these big enemies usually does an entire health portion in one go. Fortunately these are completely cheesable just like most other enemies in this game. Fat enemies usually are rather difficult, aren't they? That seems to be a common thing. Well, you just pretend I've never played this before, so this looks really impressive. Clearly the Tin Man should die in one hit from lightning, but no. These dash attacks only do half the damage of a regular combo, but they are a lot safer. and you get ambushed at night by those little... things. Close vicinity, way blocked, enemy line, blah, castle, something. So yeah, not now the enemies are red. That makes them harder. selling this game very much on my right now. I like it. More very helpful pits here. Bye bye. The 360 controller's D-pad is really not the best one for games like this, but I'll make do. <laughs> the skeleton's already dead, so he didn't really care. He's already experienced this doom once, so a second time means nothing to him. After watching me knock the first guy in immediately, he already knew he was boned, so he didn't care. As fun as the arcade stick would be, it would be entirely too clicky for this microphone. It picks up these regular clicks more than I would like as it is. <laughs> This amazing level boss is, of course, a bunch of regular enemies. Excellent strats. I just got bashed in the face by a shield. 
the skeletons can also stun like you, unfortunately. They're like the only enemy that can, and they're really annoying. When 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 you get stuck between two skeletons, that's like GG, you lose life. And incidentally, if you do have any magic remaining when it becomes nighttime, then they will steal it and you have to take it back. We are now halfway through the game. Checks watch. This level you can knock every single opponent into the pit. No exceptions. Yes, yes it is. And now I'm going to keep trying to get back on this until it runs away, because, yeah, it's right against the wall. He just automatically gets on when you're in close range, so I couldn't, like, prevent that from happening. There we go. We're now up to the boss already, because we just kind of cheesed them all into the pit. Get in. There we go. End game. I'll try to save some of that lying around. Whoops. Immediately grabs one after saying he's going to leave them lying around. Now we do a bit more of this. I know this is very fun and exciting. The sound of his body repeatedly hitting the floor. the actual boss. Double full magic, which is about, if you add both of those two magical casts together, that's about half as good as the best magic from the, uh, the female character, who is the actual magic user. I got wrecked. And now we do more of this. Stage 6 boss. And then I screwed up. I wonder if I will finish this stage without losing my first life. Or falling asleep. Is Lillian's favorite animation. Not gonna read the text. Oh no, fake final body, you go get the real one, bye, GG. That, that's essentially the gist of it. Another level full of pits. Lillian's favourite lack of animation. Sorry, I'm kind of leaning close to the mic to make out the chat, which is in white on a white background. It's, it's kind of amazing. Let me get behind you.
And now here we get an absolute crap ton of magic, which we are never going to be able to carry. I am a highly professional streamer. I didn't realise that Twitch likes to likes to break sometimes for no reason, considering it's absolutely fine on Firefox, but I'm using Chrome to save on like RAM and performance and CPU because my CPU is garbage. And then you know, you, you can't have everything. If if you want to use Chrome, then you have to have terrible chat if the dark theme is on. I mean, that's true, it does make the game harder, so obviously that was my intention. Interestingly enough, those guys can actually walk over the pit if they step over it, but not when they're, like, getting knocked on their ass. Final boss. Okay, so here is a fun fact I can mention. I used to think for many, many years that these two skeletons were invincible because they just keep getting up over and over and over. However, they do have health. They just have about 900 million. So I could set myself a challenge to actually kill them. However, I will be there all night, so let's not do that. Also, I died. That's a shame. So he only ever uses the dragon if you get hit by the little yellow electric things. The others he will use whenever. Oh crap. There's, there's really no need for that horrendous overkill. At least the final boss has something vaguely resembling a challenge. I say that when I'm gonna lose a continue if I, uh, if I get hit by the dragon again, but whatever. We don't care about that. That's what they're there for, right? He dead. You are now extremely rich. Before the Banjo Kazooie live streams, I had only ever monetized like one of my videos. So so far, my total earnings from YouTube in my life is exactly zero. So beat that. And now, because that playthrough lasted such an incredibly long amount of time, uh, let's see what time are we on now. Yeah, I think, I think the credit scene is going to be about as long as the rest of the game was. Because it goes through all the enemies and then through all the cast and all their stats, so I think this, this credit sequence is actually going to take about as long as the entire playthrough. So that was fun. gets better than that, don't worry. He, 
like he's just kind of standing there. I think 89 pounds is a little heavy for a skeleton if I'm not mistaken, but I could be. These guys are all named after various alcoholic beverages and ingredients. Chicken leg, definitely the best name. That's exactly what that is. Huge difference between those two. Here's the best wine, Belonging's Pot. The Blue Thief does indeed carry a lot of pot. <laughs> Villager A is 3 foot 7. That guy we didn't see because he only appears in junior mode, which is where you play the first three levels with easier enemies and a few other differences. Yeah, it loses a little bit of the intimidation factor there, doesn't it? Of course, revealing the female character's weight is completely unacceptable. Here we have the actual credits, which is kind of awesome, but uh, yeah, still takes a little while. Although it's uh, it's always that character throwing the little bundle of letters towards the enemy, uh, regardless of who you play as, for some reason. sitting and listening to the, what, 20th loop of the music. You know, I was gonna make a wacky joke, but I couldn't think of one good enough, so I didn't. I was just gonna add a yeah a few, a few times, but then I figured that wasn't good enough. This game really isn't good for giving me interesting things to talk about. It's a good job it's so short. Hopefully my final ranking is acceptable. We'll find out shortly. I'll bet they never saw that coming, la 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 lol. Okay, never mind. Well, let's move on to the score. 
I got an A++++. Does that mean I win? So I guess before we move on to the sequel, we can try the duel, which is where you fight enemies repeatedly. There are 12 stages, and you only have one life bar throughout. We're probably going to fail miserably at this, but let's give it a go. Also, the timer means absolutely nothing whatsoever, except for affecting your ranking, I believe. So we're just going to pretend that's not even a thing. faces though. This could be problematic if I don't get the dragon immediately. Also this arena is to totally where the credits were uh, held, because like, why not? Uh oh. Double skeletons. fancy movement pattern. They're actually able to move out of the way, unlike the regular guys. I know, right? But the sky's changing colour every battle, so that means every arena is completely different. Pretty sure, wow, as I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure this is the fight that always used to ruin me as a child, because I could not keep them away from the second dragon, or even take the first one. Also, this firewall is really loud in my ear. I should probably turn the volume down, but I'm too lazy. I'm too lazy for a lot of things right now, aren't I? And that was an excellent imitation of Twitch chat. You just need a few more cappers and lulls and, you know, all that stuff. Maybe a few pug jumps. That enemy health bar always confused me because it's shared amongst all the enemies. Hey look, it's enemies unique to the duel. And by that I mean recall its skeletons. Got back from the die shop, clearly. Whatever floats the boat. They can have their armor be ridiculous if they want. Jumping into a swinging axe is an excellent idea. I guess we're just doing this for these guys. fighting all the way through into night time. I can't imagine how bored he must be by now. Indeed, I hope the skeletons realise that they're going to need their rushrooms for side quests later on before spending them all on die. Might be here a while. 
the timer is most certainly going to run out on this one. does run out, it's going to be a close one. I might actually just barely make this one in time. And now this guy is just non-existent. Still deciding whether or not to dignify that one with a response. Okay, last one. Why did I even do the duel? This isn't entertaining. Or even particularly fun. Double tap the dash button and press attack to win. I could probably write a script to get through the duel by itself. Double exclamation mark. Now we know they're serious. Oh no, we're not watching this again. I, I was interested in my rank, now I'm not. I'm aware I could frame skip, but I'm not going to do that, so let's just go ahead and load the next game. Uh, where are we? We're clicking the wrong button, that's what we're doing. should take this opportunity to turn down the sound a little in my head. The super serious intro can speak for itself. This part's kind of cool though because you got the the big serious bit at the start, and then this this funky bit of the music is the part that loops. Like once this bit's played through, it'll it'll go back to the start of the funky part. So you can just kind of sit here and listen. But let's not do that. So I would play on hard uh, for you know showing off how awesome I am and stuff, even though I'm not. But all hard does really is throw even more enemies at you and makes the game take even longer, so let's just go for normal so we can actually get to the end, because easy only goes up to level 5. And this time maybe I'll play as her just for the awesome magic, which one-shots the majority of the bosses, kind of. Easy mode only goes up to level 5, and the enemies have half health, and then in hard mode it's the same as normal in that you can get through the whole game, except every so often you just kinda get extra enemies, that's the only real difference, more enemies. They don't have more health or do more damage or anything like that. And I've already been flawed. You do have a bit more control over the types of attack to do in this game. 
compared to the first. You can pick people up rather than kicking them if you walk up to them first. And you can get more magic books out of these guys if you only do weak attacks. These are the, the guys who draw magic. They're now actually dangerous. I think this game has a significantly better soundtrack, personally, than the other one. Not that the other one's, like, bad. But... This one does have a more hilarious death sound, though, if that's possible. With their bleh. They just kind of vomit everywhere. I can see why you would call them that, yes. The, the villagers are interesting, but at least there's more than like one type, I guess. And they're gonna come and steal my things. Like scumbags. Plus. Now we get some story. After the battle in the Ravaged Village, we decided to start for the Ancient Ruins. Fascinating. That, that voice I just read that line in is how I'm going to say Jinjo, by the way. Just, just so you know. I got wagging tailed. It's, it's a specialty attack. I am now officially wasting magic. I also officially don't care. me significantly. These are now grey, shadowy skeleton things. We've only just seen skeletons for the first time in this game and they're already recolored. Oh, well there goes that. Guess I won't be eating tonight. They made it so that you can't constantly cheese by doing the dash attacks now because the enemies have a random chance of having priority over your attack if they do a dash at the same time. So I'll attempt to mix it up a bit. Look, the third skeleton we call it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure walking sticks are just for hitting people with when casting spells. Time for the ridiculously OP magic. And he still managed to hit me. I like to call those guys the no-heads. Even though that's not strictly accurate because the heads are in their shields. Enemy, ancient, base, destroyed, headquarters. I'm just gonna pick out random words now. This is another one of those levels where you can get a reasonable number of opponents into the pit. Or rather have themselves walk into the pit because they're excellently programmed.
Uh, that's another thing you can do, you can change the direction of the throw before you make it. Which wasn't a thing in the first game. I don't know how I missed that guy. We always dash them so that we get maximum books. And this would theoretically be scary if you couldn't just knock them in like so. And now, this, this is the best part. Did you see how much I struggled with that part? What were they thinking, making it so difficult? Bye then. Magic book short of the dragon is the phoenix, which is almost as good. These should all be very close to death now. And I somehow still managed to get decked. Castle blocked mountains reluctantly through cave. Throat. Adding throat after several seconds reminded me of 018999, etc., etc., but reciting that would be stupid. There's something mildly entertaining about jumping and then spamming the attack button. skillfully jumped over your attack intentionally. That's what happened. Of course these guys are conveniently purple to match the palette of that guy. I was about to call him a tail because it's vaguely similar to purple. But then I realised he's not a tail. So this is an instance of uh, one of the areas in hard mode where after you kill these two things here, like two more just run in from the sides and then you kind of just fight them. Just kind of adding stuff. I am getting ruined right now, trying to read the uh, almost invisible chat. It's, it's quite a fun challenge. I cannot hear any hailstones, but I am wearing the headphones. The weather has been rather garbage. This may be where I lose my first life. There are plenty of things you could do with set power. Not all of them good. Ow.
As usual, the dragon makes extremely short work of the boss. Oh right, they've, uh, they've started moving. Must pay attention. Looks like we're back to full health again. That's reasonable. We the and the in of us. If I was playing on easy, this would be the final stage. assistance in understanding the very complex and intricate details. I mean, there are quite a lot of subplots, so it makes sense that you'd have some trouble if you hadn't played it, like, several times. Getting destroyed by this Edward Scissorhands guy. Satisfactory performance. Where have we seen this technique before? Dragon ready. Didn't really want to spawn those guys until the little ones were dead. But... Ow, that works. They've been in the sun far too long. Chicken leg. Like. Yeah. So much for that. Yeah. Gets destroyed. Well, this guy just kind of hides up here. Knowing full well he's not as close as the other two. Boo. You'll probably hear Lillian's laugh in a few seconds. There we go. The old double silver no head wombo combo. have the highest evasion statistic or whatever you want to call it. They always get out of your way. But you can still use that to your advantage. Ow. And we skip night time, which means we start dying now, but that's cool. Comma, comma, full stop, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Indeed, that is his name. It's exceptional. We 
we died. This is the only green lizard in the game. Not counting the jewel. I'm surprised I managed to break out of that. Time for the best palette in the game. Lillian loves this guy's colours. They're so good. And yeah, now that you mention it, they're, they're, that sprite is a little weird. Let's just do this a few times. The age-old knock him in the pit technique still applies here, although that guy does at least attempt to get behind you. Gotta give him some credit for that. And same again here. That one on the left might actually knock me in. So I'm not gonna risk it. Let's just fight this guy. Or do that. Well now we have two to fight, or it might be one depending on where they're standing. You know, it's clearly intended to act as camouflage. Yeah, the amount of programming that went into this game is pretty good. It was probably intended, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, you can see this guy is beating me in the uh, run at each other game every so often. And why is that? Well, I was going to knock those into that little tiny sliver of pit in the bottom left, but now the screen has advanced too much, so I guess we're fighting them properly. How boring. Unlike Streets of Rage, enemies can't go off screen in this game. I'm getting destroyed by the magic guys, whose only job is to provide you with excellent books of magical variety. I think we're going to lose our second life to some more regular enemies. I don't know if this level's like a big step up in difficulty or if it's just because there was like no night time between these last two stages. Yeah, those guys really went all in at the die shop. Here we are at the scene from the intro. It's also a lot harder to cheese them to the side like that in this game. Yeah, you'd think they'd make some kind of rattly sound or something, but nope. If I'm gonna die, can we at least wait until the boss to die? Okay, cool. Ooh, almost. This guy apparently has two heads because there's one in his shield and then his other head is just kind of on the chair. That's unfortunate.
and now it's final boss time. This guy actually has the Golden Axe. And he got first hit. That kinda sucks. This guy hides at the sides the entire time. So the way this guy works is he constantly spawns these skeletons and he can only cast his magic if he has three skeletons out at the same time. So you should probably pick them off every so often. I think you're supposed to like throw them into him and stuff, but like why bother with that? Just knocked me the entire way across the screen. And again. Are we gonna lose a continue? I think we are. Oh well. We now get one free magic to do the crappest spell we have. That probably done essentially the, the scientific equivalent of nothing. He only needs like two more hits as well. So our score is going to take a pretty big hit for that, but whatever. It's over, we did it. Unfortunately, these credits don't take nine hours. And hero is me. And then for some reason the ending theme is rather bad ending-ish, at least in my opinion. Certainly not as happy as the last game. That one does look slightly more preferable. I'm afraid we do not get hilarious enemy names. I just stick with the ones which I made up when I first played the game. I think no head and scissor hands are uh, roughly on par with like chicken leg and whatnot. I mean, kind of. Obviously, you can't ever actually beat chicken leg or belongings pot, but you know. You do get hilarious credits names like Gas Gas Goss though. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of chess pieces at Sony. The ground floor is for checkers and, and then our floor is for, for chess. I still got my Super A. Hooray. And I, be, I, I like doubled the required score. So, so yeah. Cool. And stuff. I'm so excited. Yay. I guess for completion's sake we should try this game's duel as well. Obviously not with her because there's no magic. Ow. 
I'll tell you what I do kind of like about this game. When the music fades out, the bass line fades out last. Like that. It's pretty cool. guys. At least every enemy has its own health bar in this game. Instead of all sharing one, which is really weird. It's too bad we don't get to see what these little green things are called. Speciality kicking foot. Skeleton's face in the top right. That's amazing. He's very happy. Dragon or chicken leg? I think I'll take the dragon. And use it to roast the chicken leg, of course. Hey, look, we have to fight one of these probably for a change. Without abusing the crap out of him with magic. Oh yeah, here's another cool thing. Uh, the guy's sprite in the top right, next to his health bar, he actually does have his head on his shoulders, not on his shield. That's, that's an interesting one. Indeed, that guy would have a lot of trouble getting into places that require ID, but without uh, weapons being allowed. No shields, so, so he's kind of screwed. I think it's two of these things. That's probably quite painful. Cool sound effect for that one. I like that one at least. Ow. I'm not entirely sure how a helmet with massive horns loses out to something's knee, but you know, we'll roll with it. time there's three opponents, that makes it harder. Not really sure what makes these different from the red ones other than their colour. these guys, and the dual arena is in fact from that same stage, so that's uh, let's just relive the whole thing. Enjoy. Back to 
that old fun and exciting gameplay. My health's getting a little bit low. Triple skeleton. to be the final battle. This red no-head is the final boss of easy mode. Instead of two silver ones, there's one of these. I might actually be losing this one. That would suck a little bit, but I'd accept the loss. Am I hell playing this through a second time? I like how you can just casually pick up and throw them. And kicking them over definitely wouldn't hurt. Oh, hey, I won. Plays the game over music. GG. Oh, are you kidding me right now? That was close to a to a super eight, but I will accept that. Also, that's an awesome background color. That other just playing along to save your own feelings. Well, that's that. Should we call it a day, or should we find one more short thing to do? Any preferences? I know, right? How dare he think he's able to win? I guess I'll think about it while this music loops one time. I like how the axes there aren't even golden. They look pretty cool though. Okay. Let's see if I can find anything short and not terrible. Uh, I could do a little bit of Toy Story, but I'm terrible at that. Uh, what do we have? Would have been preferable. Obviously, this is the game to play. I have never completed this game, it is too hard. If I get more than halfway through, I'll be very surprised. Hey, this game has two entire tracks, it's amazing. Found residential address of John Connor, and I'll let's walk into the, the shop and casually ignore everyone. And then go the wrong way. Get shot in the back, don't care. Terminator 2 is one of my favourite movies.
Please collect the shotgun. This jump is exceptional. At least you can jump in time with the music. At least this game is relevant to the story of the movie. Even if it's not the best game, or indeed the easiest. If it had a password system or something, that would be fine, but you have to play through the entire game in one go, and some of the parts are just impossible, and you only get one life. If you lose once, that's it. Entire game over. In fact, I think the Angry Video Game Nerd did a video on this at some point. already going turbo. That's disappointing. Can we please? So this level, if you shoot the alarm before entering the house, there are no enemies whatsoever, and it becomes a billion times easier. I'm not sure what the quickest way is here, I guess I'll just go in the front door. If you think I know what I'm doing in this game, I, uh, I definitely do not. I know in this level we just have to keep shooting stuff until his ID comes out of a drawer somewhere. And it can be random. I don't think it can be in these, I think it's only in the regular ones. That is a bathroom. Maybe in there. Nope. We're kind of running out of places. But we need all those future objects anyway. Because, you know, they had to make the game harder somehow. They're totally a thing. Even though this track is used a lot and it's repetitive, at least it's not terrible. I guess the ID's gotta be in there, because if it's not, I'm kinda screwed. Okay, there we go. That's everything, right? Now for the needlessly difficult driving sections. Like, getting to your destination is fine, but when you're getting chased constantly by things that ram into you and come at you so fast that you can't possibly react in time, it's uh, not the most fun thing ever. You could only take damage from your own mistakes on these levels, that would be cool, but that's not even close to being the case. Yeah, I enjoyed those parts too. I always have to rewatch them several times. Alright there, mate. So this is where we don't start getting attacked by security until we fire, but I do have to fire to get these objects, so we just kind of hope no one's around. I think they only shoot at me once I've, like, injured a person. Once you've taken your gun out, you can't put it away, which is a little unfortunate, but I guess that doesn't matter, because they, they don't care that you're walking around at, with a gun at arm's length. They only care once you've shot it at someone. 
tied to like actual America, I guess. Go and buy some flowers. They had to put one in there because he conceals his shotgun with those in the film. Or at least that's my assumption. Of course, this escalator is a down escalator, so you know we, we just jump up it. That's what Terminators do. to go to the ammo shop to get a new weapon, because even though I kind of like the shotgun, I don't think you can leave until you've got the rifle. Guys, if you could just go away, that'd be fantastic. Because what's going to happen is they're going to walk into these explosions and die. Where the hell did you come from? Okay, that's that. Seven hundred rounds is probably enough. It's okay, it's impossible to kill people in this game. Every single time you shoot someone it just says non-fatal wounds, because you know, have to stay true to the film. You know what, I'm a Terminator, I can just ignore these bullets, it's fine. But that can't be ignored. There's the afterburner machine. Yes, do follow. This part always made me laugh because when he's walking down the stairs, uh, John Myers, his head just looks like a little ball rolling down the banister and it's hilarious. Please get out the way. I like how a motorbike rams a police car a few times and the police car explodes. I get the feeling I'm going terribly the wrong way. These guys are hostile from the start, if I'm not mistaken. What are we doing here? So you don't need to follow me until we find Sarah Connor. So we just get the objects, find her first. Which means I guess I should ignore the main staircase for now and go all the other routes. The problem with this level is that it's so long that you just take a load of damage over time.
That was completely pointless. Wait, is there more? I thought I already checked. I did. Interestingly, the steam damage from those radiators does more than most of the actual bullets. I know there's one of these where you can keep going and there's a second one, but apparently it's not here. I hope I don't run out of ammo, that would kind of suck. Oh crap. Please go away. I just kind of sat in the explosion from a sofa. No, thank you. I hope the lift is here. Go. Don't come in. Okay, good. I think the little pictures of the main character's faces are pretty cool, honestly. These are all the potential cells where she can be. Ah, oh, there she is. So, 4, 3, door 3, I guess. We can't do anything with her unless we bring John. So let's get the rest of the future objects. That's not a real plant. to shoot that. Gotta love the frame rate when there's two explosions at once. I don't think there's ever anything of interest in these cell doors now that I know where Sarah is, but we'll check anyway. Oh, and that just leads back there. So moving on. I'm just gonna systematically do all the floors via the lift. Because, you know, medicine is really good for machines that, that look like people. Do you don't have any elevator music? I've lost count of the floors now because that guy just appeared. I think this is the right one. Yeah. The staircase. Yeah, we don't need that. We already checked all these doors on the floor below because we can see into the rooms. I think this is the place where there's two. Excellent frame rate. This is not the place where there's two. At least there's only one location still to find. Would you please stop disguising yourself as the random things? Even though that's kinda your entire thing.
And I just missed the lift, so screw that, we're taking the stairs. Oh crap, wow, I just took way too much damage from that radiator, I just lost like a third of my health. And then after that of course I walked through the steam. You know, despite all this game's problems, at least, at least it makes you feel like a badass playing the Terminator. You just kind of walk through everything, and he doesn't react. Okay, now I just need to check to the left, and then if it's not there, then I need to go back to the ground floor and do the other thing. Okie dokie, I see what you did there. Ah, here we go. for the medicine. As always, that's very helpful with the machine parts. Now we just need to go and get John and bring him to Sarah. I believe it was 4-3, right? 4-3, door 3. Taking the stairs is such a terrible idea. This is going to take so much longer than just waiting for the lift, I think. Okay, you follow me. Please stop shooting John in the head. John does also have his health, which is shown on the pause menu, and if he dies, then you're kind of screwed. Is this 4 3? This is not 4-3, how did I go too far? I guess some of them just don't have doors. This route is a little longer than I was intending. As long as it brings me out on the right floor eventually. Go away, please. No, not you. Not where I want it to be. Okay, here we go. Now she's going to be willing to follow. You know what? Let's take the lift. At least she's armed. And she doesn't even take your pistol. go down, please. It would be nice if you had some sort of control over the direction of this thing, but meh. Whoops. 
place has too many floors. Is this the way out? This doesn't look like the way out. I think the door that says exit above is probably the way out. Now we're just kind of getting chased by the T-1000 and he went past Sarah, that's amazing. You got ignored. That took a long time. Okay, so this is the first one where I have a very high chance of dying. Of course, now it's even harder to avoid stuff now that we don't have a bike. And this is the level where you have to go way out into the desert. In fact, I don't even think you can get to the desert from down there. You have to go this way. The next level gets you the minigun, which is awesome. But I don't think I'll be able to get there without death. This part used to confuse the hell out of me, and it probably still will. It's not like I can remember this as well as the other games I've played today. I'm not gonna save state. Once I'm dead, I'm dead. No idea if I'm still going the right way, because the compass just points in the actual physical direction of the building, not the, the fastest route on the road. Health is getting low. Victory unlikely. Please get out of the way. I don't know why the bikes are constantly after you, they don't even look like police bikes. I think I just made a big massive like trip in a circle which was completely unnecessary. Imminent death. Extremely imminent death. And this is the point where I would have to be restarting the entire game. And there we go. This is the ending you get. If, if you die during one of those driving levels, then you get no sound whatsoever, and if you die during a regular stage, then you just get the regular stage music. Yep. We get some images vaguely resembling those from the film. They're not that bad, honestly, they're pretty good. And they spell judgment correctly. Lots of people like to put an extra E in there. I like how there's a, there's a TM symbol next to the Terminator's face. Okay, so that's that one. Let's have one more quick look at our list of games, because we're... we're dumb. Huh. Unfortunately, none of these are massively interesting. I mean, there is Pugsy, which is awesome, which I'm definitely going to stream at some point, but that's too long. There's some really dumb ROM hacks here. Castlevania, I'm terrible at that. Bob is also pretty good, but too long. I'll play that at some point too, I think. Uh, Sonic 3 Complete is an awesome mod of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Okay. I guess... I guess let's just go back to Mega Games for a few minutes. It is 23.48. I will be stopping at 0000. zero, zero, zero. Probably. Uh, let's
let's have a go at the Revenge of Shinobi, I guess. A little go. Those sound effects are now efficiently modern because they're used in Sonic Mania. You can make yourself look really awesome by spamming a load of buttons on this really fast when really all you need to do is wait for several seconds. Look how many buttons I just pressed. If you can't tell, we're absolutely just fucking about now to waste some time. And no, I'm not good at this game. When I used to play it a little more often, I could make it to the final stage without too much trouble. I'd fall into the ocean a few times in the water stages, get lost in the maze for about three days, and then eventually get there. I think I've only finished it once without save stating them. Because things seem to take an eternity when you are a child. And also with this cheat on you can just kind of spam as many shurikens as you want. That was an expertly intercepted attack. Except it wasn't, it was pure luck, but we can pretend that it was. go. Wait, did the go arrow even appear? I wasn't paying attention. It didn't. There we go. I did not know that secret thing was there, apparently. Or I just forgot. Let's just go. I like the explosion sounds in this game, they're kind of awesome. Ooh, almost. Almost got me. Pew pew. No pew pew. Didn't take damage though. This suddenly isn't going very well. Whoops. Whatever. So I didn't get the hidden life up there at the first part, I don't think. But we don't we don't care about lives. Otherwise we would have set the difficulty to easy. I'm pretty sure the difficulty in this game changes nothing but the amount of lives, though I could be wrong. This is not the fastest method by any means necessary. I don't know why I said the word necessary, that wasn't necessary. Point is, I'm just gonna do this. Because I have infinite shurikens and it's fun.
I've always despised this level. Because it was the bane of my existence as a child. First of all, the background is incredibly distracting and you can't see the enemies but what's against it. And secondly, I guess I was just really bad and used to fail several of the jumps. I think what we'll do is the first time I die, we'll call it a day there. And wrap up the stream. Spin to win some more. A few more Sonic jumps. Timing on the second jump's always been a little bit finicky in this game. Sometimes you can screw up if you're terrible. Wasn't even worried, of course. This music's pretty funky. Definitely isn't bad on the eyes or anything. Let's just use this, I guess. And again, sure, why not? And again, sure, why not? Even though it's really not necessary the third time. Pretty sure that sound effect is the same one as uh, Player One's police on Streets of Rage. And now we have Army Men. Also, I've never noticed that there's planes in hangars in the background before, that's kind of cool. I was standing there trying to figure out what that symbol actually is because it's always looked weird to me. Now we get to kill some dogs for some reason. That guy just got poked. Good enough. Just go ahead and use this so I don't get knocked out the door. That would suck a little bit. Oh, 
Also, I did say I was going to stop at midnight, which is one minute away, so... I suppose I will attempt this boss and then stop. I'm going to be here all day, because I already used my thing before. I could let, let it kill me and then sacrifice myself twice to kill it really quickly. But instead, I'll probably just stop at 12. Yeah, I'm just gonna poke it until I die. There we go. Not really sure why a little container does so much damage to you, but hey. Now we can do this. Attack does insane damage, but it does cost a life. And I guess we're calling it there, so thank you everyone for watching, and next time maybe we'll do something a little more interesting, or something that I'm a little more competent at at least. So let's scream, rotate our sword, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.